Yo, hey guys, Smallmouth Crush. Today's video is going to be totally different than what you may be used to. If you're new to the channel, which you may be because perhaps you typed in, you know, how to rig a tip up or what's the best line to use when rigging a tip up, and you found me, I'm going to give you a quick little bit of background about myself and what you can expect if you decided to subscribe and hang out uh, on this channel, Smallmouth Crush. So, Smallmouth Crush, really. I picked that name because I love catching smallmouth, right? It's one of my favorite freshwater species to fish for. But that's not all I fish for. In fact, before I moved here to the East Coast, uh, growing up in Wisconsin, I've done a lot of ice fishing, waterfall hunting, walleye fishing, salmon and trout fishing, pretty much anything and everything you can think of when it comes to the outdoors, I did. And over the last eight, nine years since I lived out here on the East Coast, a lot of those things I used to do, I just didn't have access the way I used to. And so I really just spent a lot of time fishing for bass on the Chesapeake Bay, largemouth, and then heading up to Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River every chance I could uh, to fish for smallmouth. Uh, in those seven, eight years, I started a guide service where we'd run trips on the Chesapeake Bay as well as uh, smallmouth trips in upstate New York. And a lot of that's going to be changing now that I'm actually moving up there permanently. So I want to make a video. I'd like to get to the point where it's once a week. But right now it just might be a random non-bass fishing related video. So to my viewers that follow the channel, I know there's a guy in Alabama right now that, has, that does not care about how to rig a tip up. But we are going to be putting some of those things out on the channel. And eventually I will create a playlist separate to my bass fishing videos. And I know there's some people that are watching right now that don't even don't even know what a, a Cinco or a brush hog is, but they love ice fishing. And so this will hopefully help you out. And here's the deal, guys. I am just getting back into some of this stuff from being gone for years. This is the first thermal tip-up I've ever owned, right? It's a 10-inch uh, Frabel Pro Thermal tip-up supposed to help cover the hole keep some of the the snow and, and ice from forming you know i grew up with homemade tip-ups i grew up with beaver dam tip-ups that's was my tip-up fishing back in the day so as i'm gaining all this new uh, equipment and and trying to learn as much as i can so here's the cool part about this journey i'm going to rely a lot on viewers comments to help me out to help me improve if you see something i'm doing wrong Okay, because it's been a few years, let me know. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to actually help you out too, and, and we can learn together. So, I'm going to share with you how I decided to rig these tip ups and the purpose of these specific tip ups moving forward. We're going to talk about some of the different lines that I'm going to put on it and how I'm going to rig it. So, I literally have thousands of hours on the ice, but it's been a long time eight plus years. So, getting back into it, a lot of things have changed from the rods and reels, electronics, of course, and tip-ups. Now, I'm sure these have been around quite a while, but this is the first time using these, these setups. So I, I decided to purchase six of these. What I like about them is they're very compact. You can actually uh, put six of them in a five-gallon bucket, carry them out there. Uh, they also have uh, lights, so I can attach a light to it if I decide to fish at night. So these tip-ups are going to be specifically for walleye fishing. All right, let's talk about the line that we're going to use for these tip-ups. So I'm a huge fan of Cortland line. They're based out of New York. They've been around many, many years. They know what they're doing. I love, I love their braided line for my bass fishing applications. So naturally, when I started looking at options to rig these tip-ups, I talked to Brooks over at Cortland, and he, he recommended some of their uh, Daycron line. This is a 50 pound test and it's a 2,500 yard spool. So it's a big spool. I'm gonna be able to rig up all my, my tip ups with that. So this is gonna be kind of what I'm gonna call my baseline. There's some tip ups that I'm using this on all of the line, but for these specific tip ups, I'm gonna use this kind of as a backing, if you will, a filler. Now, there's different options. I've looked at using braid. So braid's a little bit more expensive, of course. Thinner diameter, it's gonna take a lot more. It's just not really, um, it'll work, but it's just not what I decided to go with. So when I picked up this Dacron line earlier this week, they also gave me some of these spools. This is a poly-coated line. It's gonna be a lot more efficient in those colder temperatures. It's got a coating on it. 
So not only, because obviously with tip-ups, you're fighting that fish with your hands, right? Whether you have gloves on or not, you want something that's going to be thick enough to be able to handle, and you want something that when it's wet, okay, this isn't going to soak in water. This isn't going to freeze instantly. You know, when you reel up a fish, or I guess handline a fish, whatever you want to call it, I don't know what you guys, what the technical term for ice fishing is, uh, but when you're fighting a fish with a tip up, and let's say you got, you know, 20, 30, 40 feet of line, and you're you're fighting that fish, and you're just kind of throwing that line on the ice, this is going to instantly freeze. It's going to be a lot more manageable. And we're going to actually get down and show you exactly what what I'm going to do here. But if we take this take this tip up out of the packaging here, and I'll show you what we're going to do. So there's your spool. I'm going to run a little bit of fluorocarbon line as a backer because that's a lot of line I can fit on that spool. I don't need that much line. And so I don't want to waste all of this. But I do want to put a little bit of fluorocarbon backer on this. We're going to put about 100 feet of line on this. Okay, so we'll have 100 feet of that. And then this spool here is 50 yards. So it's uh, 150 feet. And I want to use... I want to use one spool should cover two of these tip ups. So I'm going to put 75 feet of this. That should cover me. I don't, I don't see why I would need more. At least that's my thought process here. I will tie it well to this other line here. So if I do go past 75 feet, I, mean, I don't see it happening, but I'll still be able to fight that fish. But I don't even think we'll have to get to that point. I'm really just using it as a filler. And I'm just going to, and I mean, I just picked a number because it was half of what this spool is, okay? If you want to go 100 feet of this or even more, uh, go for it. So here's the deal. I don't think they sell this currently. They're looking at getting back into this market. Depending on when you're watching this video, you might want to check back on Cortland's uh, website. And I'll put that link, of course, in the description below. You may want to take a look and see if they have that that poly coated line available. Let's spool up this uh, this tip up here. Oh, speaking of tip up, so this is what I grew up using. This is actually an original beaver dam that I used, you know, when I was probably six, seven, eight, nine years old. It, uh, I was able to, my, my dad gave me a bunch of them. Uh, he brought these up the other day when he when they came to visit, so it's uh it's pretty cool my mom actually the flag was all like i think mice chewed the flag so i had my mom sew a new uh flag on these beaver dams yeah, here we got to rig this up so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put some backing on this spool so i'm just going to take fluorocarbon line or mono or whatever you have laying around junk line is what i would recommend right you don't need to buy a brand new spool uh, if you if you have some that's accessible i don't care if it's eight 12, 15, 17 pound line, whatever you got laying around. I'm just actually going to take it off of a baitcaster reel that I, I need to change the line out anyways. This is a 12 pound gamma, not that it matters. But. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just basically grab that line from that spool and I'm going to put two, just going to do a knot and get it tight and then do another overhand knot. Take in, clip it off. There we go. Now here's something that I learned with these tip-ups. You can take this little stopper and unscrew it right here. Okay. And once you have that off, you can take your drill and it'll actually fit right into there. I got my baitcaster open. That's where the uh, line's going to come from. I'm just going to take my drill and just start winding that backing on there. So you're just kind of going up and down that spool. And I can speed it up here. Okay, I feel like that's plenty of backing right there. That should be good. Okay, so now all we're going to do is we're going to cut that off. Again, this is 50 pound test. I don't know. I think you can use 30. I, I, I think it, you know, it's your personal preference. Okay, so I just loop it through. I'm not sure what this knot's called. I go like five or six down and then five or six 
back up that line and then through the opening. Let's get that tag in as, as close as you can without wrecking it. But that's fine. I, I will never get down to this, but I just want it to be tight, right? So now we're going to finish putting 100 feet of this on here. And how do we know it's 100 feet? So I use this little device by Rapala a lot when I'm spooling braid on my spinning rods. I use a lot of five pound braid on my finesse fishing applications. So on a 3000 size spinning reel, you know, five pound braid, you could burn through a lot of braid and put a lot of line on there and you don't need all that line. So again, I use a lot of backing for that, but then uh, I like to use this so I know exactly how many feet or how many yards I'm putting on that. So I'm gonna actually use this so I can put exactly 100 feet of line on this tip. -up. Okay, you can see here, it's at zero. And uh, as I put that on the spool, it'll tell me exactly how many feet went through that. And we're just gonna start. Okay, there goes the the line. Again, I just want to go back and forth and get it even. Okay, now that I got about a hundred feet on there, we're going to take this poly-coated line. Okay, this will be the, the main line that I'll be using to fight the fish. This will be This will get the most use. This is uh, 50 yards. I used half of it already on another tip up. So I got 75 feet of this I'm gonna put on. Now I would run it through the line counter, but since I already used half, I know that there's there's only 75 feet left. So, okay, this is the most, this this part here, I may need your advice on, okay? If you're, if you're still following me here, you could probably use a little swivel to attach these two. It's very hard to connect these, this poly, with this Dacron. Um, I'm gonna attempt to do it. I feel like I've done it on the other ones, but it was trial and error. So we're just gonna make that loop and I'm just gonna go down maybe four or five actually with this line. It's, it's not easy to work with and I'm not used to this at all. I'm not used to this at all. See, it's, it's very, it's not that manageable to tie that type of knot. And I'm sure I'm messing up here. Okay, so I'm gonna start over. I've done it five times already, I got it. But I wonder if I go, I wonder if I should loop Dacron and go like this. We're gonna try it this way. Now you certainly, you know, maybe a swivel is gonna be the best way to attach this. I'd like to hear your thoughts. But we're gonna try this knot here and see if it catches there. So that caught, I really, I try to pull as hard as I can. I don't think I'm gonna break that. I really don't. And keep in mind, there's there's 75 feet and I'm not fishing too deep of water. You know, what's the most I'll be in? Maybe 30. Now that we got that on, we, again, we just pick up the drill. And there it is. And again, just go even up and down that spool. Pop this back on there. There, that's perfect. Of course, we're gonna put a leader on here and I'll do that. Right. Okay, so I'm just taking a little barrel swivel, okay? And that's gonna attach that line to my leader. Okay, so I attach that to the barrel swivel and I'm gonna take that poly-coated line I'm just gonna do like a fisherman's knot, right? I'm just going to, for me, that seems to be the easiest way to deal with this, with this line. Like I said, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna break that. I test it, it seems to be pretty strong, but it's, it's a little difficult to, to work with that. At least it's not what something I'm used to. So I put maybe, what is that? Four, four and a half foot liter I'm, I'm putting eight pound fluorocarbon on it to start. I'm gonna use a uh, Gamagatsu size six. Okay. 
And then I'm just going to take a 2.5 gram split shot here and I'm going to attach that maybe a foot above that hook. Okay. I think that should be enough weight, but I mean, obviously when I get out on the ice and start doing this, I'll experiment a little bit, but for now, I think we're good to go there. Perfect. So here's, here you go. So how these tip ups actually work again, pretty self-explanatory, but you uh, can actually pull that all the way down and you just set her there. You got your bait when the fish hits. Boom. Flake pops up. This will show you that the fish is taking line. Depend the species. You'll have to figure out when to set that hook, right? I'm excited to try these tip ups. I really am. Something new. I mean, they've been around forever. New to me. New to me. Let me know in the comments if you use this. I know there's a bunch of different companies that make a similar style. But we'll see what happens when we get out on the ice. Okay, last thing here. I'm big in labels. So I'm big into labeling everything and no different with my tip ups. I just, I want to know what I just did. I'll forget, right? 100 feet of 50 Dacron and then 75 feet of the poly. And I have the size there, 0 0.035. Just so I know, right? I know exactly what I got spooled up. Just a little extra step. You don't have to be that extreme. I do, I do. I can't function without labels. Pretty cool little tip ups. If you guys are interested in getting any gear, whether it be tackle for open water or ice fishing, I, I suggest you check out The Real Shot. It's located in Wisconsin. They have an online store, realshot.com. I believe if you use my code smallmouthcrush15, you're going to get 15% off your first order. I think that's how it still works. Try it. It's worth a try. I'll put that link below as well. They have these tip-ups. They got all kinds of ice fishing gear. Most, I, I guess all my ice fishing stuff for this year came from the real shot. So go over there and uh, check them out. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to learn a little bit more about my fishing adventures. Although we do talk a lot of bass fishing, but if, you, um, if you're if you just into the outdoors in general, hang around for a little bit. We'd love to have you. And as always, until next time, we'll see you on the, on the ice. Maybe. Normally I say see you on the water. See you on the ice. Whatever. See you guys.